Hello and welcome to the Django Celery Mastery course. Just a quick reminder, if you like this course and would like to access the source code and more, you can access this course on Udemy. The link to the course, which should provide the best price, is in the video description. Right, so let's go ahead now and build a new container for our Celery Worker. Right, so to build the Celery Worker, we're going to just copy the same settings that we utilize for our Django container. And by doing that, we're also going to include the volume. So we are going to use the same code base for both the Django container and the Celery Worker. This is just one of many approaches. But if you, for example, were building a Django application, there were maybe, maybe you had an app inside of that application that had some core code that your Celery Worker needed to access in order to perform the particular task it needs to execute. So that may be a good idea at that point for you to then make a copy of your Django project and use it on the Celery Worker. Now, that isn't always going to be the case, and we will create a, an individual Celery Worker a bit later on in this course to explore different approaches building Celery Workers. So let's create a new service. Let's call this service Celery. Just make sure that we have lined this up properly, indented this correctly. So celery. And then we'll go ahead and just copy what we have already created for the Django container. Just make sure everything is indented correctly. Uh, so the container name, let's call this celery. And we're not going to need this command. So one of the main differences here is that the Django container, we do need to run the Django server in order to access the Django service. Whereas the celery worker, that isn't going to be the case. We simply want to just use the Django code base to maybe perform some sort of action or task that is required, but we don't necessarily need to actually access the Django project through the server. So we can get rid of that now. Now we do need to actually start the Celery work and we'll discuss that in the upcoming tutorial where we look to actually activate the Celery worker. So there is a few code lines missing here, but we'll just put the, the baseline in place. So we're going to keep the same context. Uh, the volume is going to be the same, which means that our local code base is going to be used for both the Django and the Celery container. Remember again, the volume here, this will allow us to store our data, our project outside of the container, but enabling data persistence, easily backing up and sharing the data across multiple containers. And that's what we're doing here. So I've gone ahead and removed all the images and containers. I've selected and pressed delete. Uh, you can remove containers and volumes through the command prompt. It's a quite long command. So sometimes it can be easier just to, when we're working like this, just to delete them in Docker desktop. Right, so all the commands, remember, are inside the commands MD file here. So we're looking for the build command. Let's give that a go. Now, once that's done, you should have three containers. There is some other changes that we need to make. We don't need the port mapping on the salary container. So notice that it hasn't been brought up. It's orange, so it's not green, indicating the fact that maybe there was a problem. In this case, there's going to be a port uh, mismatch, potentially, because the port's already been allocated, as it says down here, actually, in the terminal. So let's go back to Dock and Compose, Celery. We don't need those ports. So let's run the command once again. So build. Now, if we look back into Docker Desktop, we can see that Celery, it does indicate the fact that maybe the actual container isn't running, but there isn't actually any services running on that container. So that is exactly where we need to be at this point. The last setting that we need to apply here in actual fact is we need to tell the message provider and salary worker where the message broker exists. So we need to let them know how or sorry, where to send the task or retrieve the task from the message broker. If you would prefer, you can set up an environment variable for this, but if you head over to decelery settings inside of the settings at the bottom here, I've already created it this here. We're going to add this setting here, so salary broker URL. Now, we are going to be setting this. You can see we're utilizing potentially environment variables, but we're going to set up a backup in case the environment variable doesn't exist, and we're not going to apply it at this point. So the endpoint or the address, if you like, of the Redis server is going to be Redis colon slash slash Redis colon and then the 6379, which is the default port. 
So you might be wondering why. Why do I have to set up ports to access, for example, the Django server, but I don't need to set up ports for maybe the Redis server. And that's because these containers, if you like, are inside of the Docker environment, whereas the Django container needs to be accessed by outside of the Docker environment, if you like. So therefore, we need a way of accessing that Docker environment. That's why we set up the ports previously. So here on the Redis server, because our Celery server and Django server is already inside of the Docker environment, if you like, then it already has potential access to the Redis server. So we don't need to set up the ports in the Docker Compose file. Now, if we take a look at the actual URL here, in case you wanted to build a separate setup, maybe you were running Redis online in maybe an existing environment that you have. So you want to, you would want to change this address, of course. So Redis here, if you imagine HTTP protocol, this is very much uh, the same type of setup here, but we're using Redis. Um, so Redis here is actually referring to the Redis serialization protocol. So that's equivalent, if you like, of typing in HTTP. Right, so we've got forward uh, slash, forward slash, and then Redis. So this second Redis here is actually a reference to the container or the container name. So if you take a look, um, sorry, the host name or address of the Redis server. So this name here is a reference, if you like, to the service Redis here. So behind the scenes, Docker is able to work out the address of that, the host name or address of that server based upon the service name there. So that's what we're using there. And 6379, but that is just the default port number, which Redis listens for connections. Now, this last number here, if you're wondering, this uh, specifies the Redis database number or index, if my memory serves me right. So Redis allows multiple databases to be created on a single Redis instance, and they can be numbered from 0 to 15. So in this case, 0 refers to the first or the default database. OK, so let's remember we are using a shared or a volume here. So that will now be available both on the Celery and the Django service. We're using the same settings and same setup for both containers. So that will be configured now for both. Just while we're looking at the settings here, there is a second setting that we're going to apply. That's the Celery result backend. You can see the same type of setup here. That's going to be the Redis server in this case. So remember, we are going to be utilizing Redis, at least at this point, for the result backend. So we just point that again towards Redis. Now there isn't anything else we need to do there. So we'd simply just point that to the result backend, our Redis server service, and we're good to go.